Hello, my name is Pia Ricirossi. I'm head of Department of Politics and International Relations, and I am a professor of global politics here at Southampton. I'm from Argentina. I always introduce this because I believe that our background and identity fundamentally shape the questions we ask and our ways of inquiry. I grew up under military dictatorship, and I saw many ways of political and economic exclusion. So not surprisingly, when I was in your place, when I was choosing my degree, I was puzzled by questions about conditions of both sustainable and inclusive models of democracy and development. I was interested in the promise of development that was brought in with the democratization process and advanced by international financial institutions such as the World Bank and the IMF, not only in Argentina, but across the developing world. I was also curious about how do international organizations support states to achieve the promise of development and the promise of inclusive democracy. Now, as a professor of global politics, my research takes up on those concerns and focuses on three areas of study, political economy of development, regional organizations and governance, and human rights and development. I try to bring to my teaching the relevant examples of the um, of Latin America, and I conduct most of my research and my teaching based on the questions that I mentioned. So my philosophy of teaching is bringing about ways of critical thinking and encouraging students to respond to socio-economic and political realities that may be quite different from their own. Now, moving to the context of COVID-19, we bring those questions of democracy, inclusive development, sustainable development, poverty, and those questions open new debates about how states, regional and international organizations can endorse inclusive democracy and development while safeguarding the rights of everyone and leaving no one behind. So let me make a few points about COVID and Latin America. The pandemic has radically altered the economic and social relations and its consequences will go far beyond the economic uh, and, and, and health crisis that we see at the moment. For Latin America, there's a huge challenge as the World Health Organization declared the region as the epicenter of the pandemic. So COVID-19 reveals three challenges in Latin America. One is that immediate health challenge in weak or weakened states with fragile and underfunded health systems. There's also the medium and long-term challenge of fighting poverty because COVID actually found a region where poverty is in the rise and countries are facing a huge economic recession, particularly in places like Brazil, Argentina and Venezuela. We have seen the challenges of this quite recently. In general, in only one year, the number of people living in poverty went up from 185 million to 191 million, of whom 72 million are living in extreme poverty. And we know that in low standards of living, the poor actually also face stronger barriers to entering the job market and access to basic healthcare services. And this affects particularly women, girls, indigenous populations, Afro-descendants and migrants, all who are underrepresented in governance structures, but overrepresented in informal working places. Finally, there is a challenge of how are we going to finance social policies in context of falling economic activity and taxes, while additional spending to redress medical and social needs are in the increase. So certainly we have learned from previous epidemics such as Zika and Ebola that epidemics 
exacerbate almost all forms of social injustices, and that inadequate political responses leave legacies that can be as severe as the disease itself. What we see in Latin America today is two types of reactions that politically could be quite questionable. In one way, we have seen health as a nationalistic renaissance where health becomes a threat to national security with the return of closed national borders and internal controls. And we also see, like in Brazil or Mexico, health as a political obstacle, where President Bolsonaro in Brazil or López Obrador in Mexico are actually leading popular mass acts, are promoting manifestations against all those recommendations from the World Health Organization and experts. So the incentives are different. The incentives really vary across the region. So in that context, the question is, what are the possibilities, if there exist, that governments and regional organizations, as well as multilateral organizations, provide leadership and direction, not only to manage health, but also, and fundamentally, to redress the structural problems that actually reproduce poverty and inequality and long-term vulnerabilities that we see across societies. I may see you and I hope to see you in the classroom to discuss these issues and to consider possible scenarios. It would be great to have you in the classroom and discuss these all together. So thank you.